Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. So I'm here for the qualifier weekend. And yeah, so excited to be doing this here with Mono White Humans. Um, if you're new to my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. And if you do like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend. For all my returning viewers, thank you guys so much for coming back and supporting me. You guys really do mean the world to me. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get uh, started here in just a minute. But I just want to, um, yeah, really kind of reflect and just, um, I've been really happy with Mono White Humans, just made a lot of, uh, a lot of progress with it. And it's been a really exciting journey to kind of be going, trying to get as close to rank one as I can with it and prepare for this tournament at the same time. So yeah, all that said, um, let's go ahead and jump in. I did make one minor change. I did, um, in the sideboard, I upped the number of Doorkeeper Thrall up to three, and then also added another um, copy of Lantern Flare, which I think is going to help. Ended up cutting Surge of Salvation, and I think, um, I'm trying to remember what else I shaved. We'll have a look here, but um, let's jump into the first match. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. It's been a while since I've done one of the qualifier weekends and especially in standard, my favorite format. So really excited here. Okay, we're on the play. Opening hand looks great. <clears throat> See if we can get our first win. <clears throat> All right, looks like we're up against the World Soul deck. So I think we want to get Thalia going. Um, damage is really important. I can't remember if they have spells on two. But I think, yeah, just getting Thalia going here is going to be smart. Um, also getting Sun Gold going. Um, that's another card I definitely want to have access to. Yeah, maybe we should have ran that out on two. Um, getting it down here is going to be good, though. Pushing damage... I think we don't want to take a turn off here for Warden. Uh, Warden is, is great to get into the air. Um, it can certainly help with uh, <clears throat> if they go like for like ill-timed explosion, but I think just trying to race here is pretty important. So I guess let's just go Vanguard. Um, actually, I suppose it's about the same with Sentinel. Maybe one more point of damage with Vanguard. Yeah, I guess we, we can just go Vanguard here and just push. Yeah, and it's hard to know. Maybe looking back on turn two, we should have gone with Sun Gold Sentinel just to get rid of their hideout since they're able to get it back with the Virtue. Okay, Brutal Cathar, it's going to be great here. They're hoping to kind of go off with Nyssa, so happy to get that out of the way.
Yep, that's gonna do it for our first first game. Okay, so what are we bringing in? We're bringing in flanker, just to help with graveyard hate. Um, <sighs> Doorkeeper thrall is not that. It's okay here, but it's not amazing. Um, I think instead we want to have like peacekeeper to slow down. Uh, potential ill-timed explosion. We can probably use invasion for that same purpose. Uh, destroy evil is like it's okay to target. I, I guess it's okay for getting like their virtue, but that's kind of like a later game play, anyways. So, I think yeah, winning the early game is going to be the most important here. Um, flare is okay. We we definitely want to have removal for their um their animist and like their one three i think actually we probably do want to cut cathar because they'll be bringing in more removal here and we don't want to like make our um late drops super super heavy so thalia is great sun gold sentinel is great um adversary is a bit less important like the life gain doesn't matter as much so i think we can probably shave a couple of those um, veteran is not that important. Can probably cut some more copies there. I think we want to leave maybe a couple just so we still have like stuff to do on one, but making a little bit more room for some more removal seems good. And I think just because we might be in a situation where we um, don't have like creatures in play, like if they get like Ill time explosion. Maybe March is like slightly better than Lantern Flare since we don't need the life. So I think I'm going to add two of those in. <clears throat> okay, opening hand looks good. <clears throat> Really happy to see Sun Gold here. We definitely want Sun Gold on too. Flanker is going to be good also. Okay, <clears throat> so now do we want to go for Invasion or Copper Coat? I mean, Copper Coat is definitely like the more aggressive play. We don't have a lot of pressure in their high life title, so I'm a little bit worried about going for Invasion right now. I think we just want to get Copper Coat going. Here, if we can draw into land, we can get Adeline into the mix. Also, this is an interesting build because they're running swamps, so I'm not used to seeing that. Usually, I'm expecting Teamer here, but um, I'm curious like what they have here with uh, the black sources. <clears throat> Okay, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think they want to set up, like, the infinite, like, graveyard loop with Shigeki.
we could play warden here and try to scry to set up otherwise i actually kind of like going for invasion of goba khan although we can't complete it this turn which isn't great Yeah, I think just getting that land is, is actually super important, especially because of, like, Kutzel's flanker. So maybe the play here is just go for Warden and try to scry. There's still a pretty high life total, and we want to just try to make sure we can get into land next turn. Uh, Night Errant is great, but we need land. Okay, now if we can get into land, we definitely want to use Flanker before they can get everything back with uh, the Analyst. Okay, so much for that. I guess they had the land anyways. They could just get there. So maybe, now maybe they just, I guess, like, chain, like, Shigeki um, with all this extra mana. Yeah. <clears throat> and then they can start, like, recurring the Analyst, I'm assuming. Okay, so it runs drag to the bottom. That makes sense.
Yeah, this one might be pretty much over. <clears throat> I guess they, they haven't just gone completely infinite, but <laughs> it's pretty close. Um, all right, what have they got? They've got robbery for a lot. Long goodbye. I guess we can make robbery slightly more expensive, but they can still just take a ton of stuff here. So I think we just go Thalia. This game is unfortunately probably pretty much over. Yeah, now even if we get their yard, it's, I mean, like, they've got, like, <laughs> half of our deck here. I think this is, unfortunately, probably pretty close to over. They've got Long Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, this is so much advantage, I think we're probably just done at this point. I think we just need to go to game three on this one. All right, so we definitely want like removal stat for, um, and I guess Storekeeper Thrall does stop the triggering of, um, actually I don't, I guess it doesn't affect the lands for Nyssa, so that's not great. Maybe we bring in like the Lantern Flares also just because it's so important to get rid of those creatures. Um, my concern there is that if they like have long goodbyes, we don't have enough creatures in play to be able to kill like three toughness. That's my concern. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep it as is. <clears throat> Okay, opening hand looks okay. Don't have a one drop, but we do have some good twos. And definitely gonna be playing Sentinel on two this turn. Okay. 
So here I think it's just too important to get Adeline going than like immediately killing the Alice. They don't have the mana for it yet also, and we can attack through. So for all those reasons, getting Adeline going here makes sense. <clears throat> Let's see, do they get to bring this back? I guess they could get it back with... Um, Hmm. Maybe like Shigeki or some other way. But right now we're going to get rid of Kellen. And then next turn we can use like March plus uh, Copper Coat. So let's start with Copper Coat here, I think. I think we want to get rid of maybe drag to the bottom. I don't know if they can get it back, but definitely worried about that. I guess spelunking could be bad too. I think we just want to go for another Adeline here to set that up. Hopefully they're out of gas. Okay, so now if we activate Foundry, got there. Whew. Oh, feels good. Wanna know. play super happy to have that opening hand looks good happy to keep um let's lead out with initiate here okay up against probably domain Animator. 
Oh, I guess it's like, yeah, four color reanimator or something. Either way, I think we definitely want to go for veteran into knight errant. I guess it's possible they could have like temporary lockdown on three, but then that gets rid of their reunion. Definitely want Copper Coat. Probably want Brutal Cathar. I don't know what they're going to be throwing at us. Probably like Angel, I would guess. And I guess if we pick up a one drop, if we pick up like Inspector here, we could um, have like two plays in one turn, which feels pretty good. Like we've got one Brutal Cathar. I don't, I'm not sure if we need the second one. We are potentially like playing into like Wrath, but getting the extra counter on Warden feels pretty good. So I think I'm gonna go for Inspector here. Like I would definitely take Cathar if I didn't have one in hand. Okay, and they've got the lockdown. Double lockdown. Okay. So we could go. The question is like, how much do we want to save the Ziganjo? I think it's probably worth playing it out so we can go Sun Gold plus attack with the Foundry. That feels pretty good. Since we've still got Brutal Cathar, I think that's probably why. I don't know if, we, if they have some way of getting back White Suns. I'm not sure. I guess they could have nonsense for getting back Riveteer's Outlook. But if they do nothing, we've got Lethal on the board, so... I'm a little bit hesitant about using Brutal Cathar in this because they've still got four cards in hand. Maybe it's better to use Iganjo. <sighs> I guess the other thing we could do is we could... Um... Hmm... Because like we're essentially pushing an extra <clears throat> three damage by getting rid of it if we put out Cathar. Um, if we use Iganjo, we're essentially missing that damage. Yeah, I could see it kind of going either way. Like using Cathar as the last card feels pretty good. So I think I'm actually just going to push with both and use the Iganjo this turn.
Mainly because if they play like a threat that we can't kill with Iganjo, we want to have Cathar there ready for it. Yeah, and like Sunfall would have been completely backbreaking if we had used our Cathar on that frill back. Okay, so now I think we just. Let's see, what do they get back? We get. What do we have under this thing? We have Initiate, Warden, and Veteran. They do get their Bitter, bitter Reunion back. Hmm. So I guess it's probably better to get this one back instead. Probably just like end of turn, get back Copper Coat plus Inspector. Hey, this is another Aftermath Analyst deck. Interesting. I don't really want to give him any more card draw, but yeah, this one's looking pretty nice too because we do get back three creatures with the initiate. I think I'm still going to go for this other lockdown though. So they're getting back two lands um, with their analyst. I think we just want to go Adeline here and push. <laughs> Question is, do we trade Copper Coat for their token? That's tough. Um, Probably not. So this is really just like another World Souls deck, essentially. Question is, what do they have in hand? Can they go off with this?
<clears throat> okay. So now I think we definitely, let's see, how much do they have in there? They have one, two, three, three more lands. The problem is that like Nissa is just as dangerous as the Aftermath Analyst here, and they already have a ton of mana. So I think, I think the plan here is we just go Brutal Cathar for their Animist. I guess we can draw a card first since that doesn't really change anything. <clears throat> I suppose now we could just attack and then just see how they block and use Iganjo. Um, I kind of like getting Cathar out there though. I mean, because they only have two cards in hand, so it's there's a decent chance that they don't have like extra removal. Plus, if they get back Nissa, uh... <sighs> yeah, I feel like we go Cathar now. Like they've used enough of their threats. It pumps up our Adeline a little bit. We can attack a little bit better. White Sun's definitely a beating. <sighs> okay, so that's pretty much... That's pretty much game. I guess they can, like, get us... <clears throat> we can block one and then Iganja the other. But then they still have seven more. So this does, this does run both White Sun and, I guess, World Souls Rage as well. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we've only got three blockers. Yeah, we're just dead on board, unfortunately, here. Okay, bringing in Kutzel's Flanker for both the Wraths and the uh, Graveyard dest Destruction. Um, what else do we want? Destroy Evil is actually pretty good since they do run Lockdown in addition to um, the virtue of uh, whatever. And then probably want the other Marches here for that same reason. What do we cut? We probably cut Veteran. Brutal Cathar is pretty thin. And... I think I like everything else here. Um, question is, do we want Peacekeeper and Invasion? I think Invasion is not as amazing because they have like removal effects here. With Sunfall, it doesn't really protect us. Peacekeeper is a threat also. It's kind of nice to have a body. Um, yeah, I think we can probably cut Adversary. It's just not that strong in this matchup. So maybe we bring in like one Peacekeeper. <clears throat> And maybe like one lantern flare just as like extra removal. I guess like invasion is okay. Like it does slow down their sunfall. So it could be like considered like the fifth Thalia for that. But like having, having answers for their Nissa Animist seems pretty important. We've got four March. So I think we probably want at least one lantern flare. I think I like everything else. Yeah. 
Yeah, this needs to be a mulligan. This is just not a strong enough hand. Oh, God, I hate going down to five. Um, I think we got to go down to five. That sucks. It's going to be pretty tough coming back from five. I guess we'll do our best. Okay, so they're just going to be getting back some more land here and then probably setting up for a big board wipe, I would guess. So in that case, we probably hold Inspector and just push. Especially since they do run... Yeah... They could probably like White Sun for seven. I guess I kind of want to play Inspector because then we can both scry and draw a card. Even if they like board wipe here, I think it's still worth doing. Yeah, so I guess we could have pushed an extra damage, or actually two extra damage there. Uh, the other thing though is that I think that it's worth holding up mana in case they have like lockdown because then we can use initiate to blow it up. So yeah, maybe should have played that pre-combat. That, that uh, probably would have, would have been better. I just had to kind of think it through.
Are they just dead? Like, have they got nothing? I mean, I guess we'll see. Oh god, cosmic rebirth, I forgot instant speed. <sighs> okay, yeah, I misplayed there, that's a huge blowout. Cosmic rebirth, didn't realize that could just All right. If we had literally just held the mana up, could have won. Oh God. Well, this tournament has already been really humbling. Okay, so now they're standing to get back, yeah, like four lands, bunch of life. Um, we could try to push with both Foundry and Adeline here, or just go for the Knight Errant of Eos play. I guess let's attack in first, just to get a little bit of damage in. I guess they just block here and take one, but we can attack in and then after that go for Knight Errant, I think is the play. Let's see, they're at 10. We could push for five, six. I guess we could hit them for six. Next turn they're gonna have Restoration though. I guess if we activate Foundry, we can search for three. So I think we just activate, but don't attack with it.
decent chance they have like mass removal here, but I think it's still good getting the warden going. They probably want a blast zone on three anyways. Okay, so with Shigeki, they can... <laughs> they can challenge to return X non-legendaries. Shigeki for Shigeki. They can also Shigeki back Cosmic Rebirth. So we probably want to get rid of Cosmic Rebirth. There's two Cosmic Rebirths. I guess we can get rid of Lockdown. But I mean... Uh, they just have so many cards they can get back here. We could also just attack and then get a little bit of damage in, but I think getting Sentinel going is a little bit more important. I guess since they can already loop everything here, let's just get the first Shigeki out of the way. Now we really need like Kutzel's flanker just to get rid of their entire graveyard. We could search with Night Errant here. I think we just can push for a little bit of damage.
We just needed to stop him a lot earlier to be able to do anything for this game, unfortunately. I think it like all came down to being able to deal with their super early um, analysts, just not having removal for it when we needed it, unfortunately. Don't think we can do anything here. We can block two of these and then, but we don't have any board wipes, so I think we're just done. All right, one and one. It's kind of crazy to think that we actually like didn't have enough graveyard hate in our deck. <laughs> like we should almost have been running like four Kutzel flankers and four uh, Sun Gold Sentinels main deck. All right, this hand looks good. I guess a lot of it is just like best of three is like such a different game. Um, Restless Reef. Let's get Thalia going. There's not nearly as much like mono red. Like there's still Boros. I guess one minor thing, we could have played Planes there instead of Cavernous Soul since they couldn't counter anyways, and maybe they would have held up a counter this turn. So yeah, maybe playing Cavernous Souls this coming turn would have been a little bit better. So I'm guessing they want to try to like block with maybe um, Mastermind here or something at instant speed. So I think the play here is just go for another adversary. Problem is like now they could have just like a deadly cover up on five. Yeah, there's the cover-up, unfortunately. Even in best of three, there's just like a ton of like mass removal creature hate. Wasted. 
man, just flooding out here. Oof. So unfortunately, still no good moves here. We um, just run into their Restless Reef. Because we could set up another Brutal Cathar, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't really get us any farther is the problem. And you could just walk into like another deadly cover up. It's another reason why I like March of uh, Otherworldly Light so much, because it can deal with these stupidly annoying man lands that just sit there and do nothing until they win the game. Probably have another cover up, but we can at least start to try to like present a little bit of a board here. And I guess we could put out Brutal Cathar, but I think maybe we just wait until next turn to play it, just in case they've got like the deadly cover up. Problem is they've had so much time to draw cards, they almost certainly have board wipe. We'll just uh, cast it in response, but we might as well target it.
Yeah, unfortunately that's probably gonna do it here. Okay, so against Demir Control, um, we definitely want to bring in Flanker. I think we definitely want to bring in Peacekeeper and Invasion to put Deadly Cover Up out of reach. Um, destroy Evil could be good. March is also really good against like their man lands and also just exiling the um, Alcazats. So veteran is a bit less important. I guess veteran is still like decent because if they use like shielded to like drain us out, but it's pretty slow. So I think we can probably cut the veterans. Brutal Cathar is pretty bad. Sentinel, I think, is still good since they run Memory Deluge. Um, what else do we want to cut here? I think we do want to have access to Destroy Evil because they definitely probably are running Shieldred or have access to it. Um, I don't know if we want to run Lantern Flare. They've got a ton of removal, so that's less good. Probably cut adversary here. I think we like everything else a little bit more. And then maybe just like shave like one inspector. Actually, inspector is probably a little bit better than initiate here. Yeah, so I think this is probably right. Okay, we've got a mulligan in that hand. Oh, I hate going down to five. Um, this hand really, we have to go down to five though. All right, it's something. It is a hand of magical cards, <laughs> I will say that, yeah. Definitely about as good as we can hope for on five. Do they have long goodbye? Cut down works also. Double cut down. Yeah, I think we just go for it and force their hand. See what they've got.
sure that's fine. Um, I guess now they can trade their 4-4 for Adeline. Do we even want to make that trade, though, is the problem. Like, I don't think we want to make that trade. We can hope to draw, like, a piece of removal and keep Adeline going. Yeah, I think we just sit. I mean, maybe we were supposed to make that trade in case they have like deadly cover up, but like we're in such a rough position. That's a good one. But again, I'm not super thrilled about making the trade. Um, I mean, I guess we're pushing some damage. So like now that we've got Vanguard, I guess they could, if they, if they remove Vanguard, like they could easily have like go for the throat or something, kill the vanguard, and then just get a free block on one of our creatures here. But there's enough of a benefit, I think, that waiting around isn't gonna get any better. So I think we push. Like there's a lot of ways we get blown out here, but I don't think it's getting any better. Okay, so they've got a, they, they probably just have like deadly in hand and they just want to keep their 4 4 around. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that one turn we were supposed to push and trade for their 4 4. Like, we're so far behind, I don't know that it would have mattered. Now we need March for Aquazats. And that's going to do it, unfortunately. Well, we ended up going one and two. So did not get there. Didn't put up a great performance. Um, definitely felt like we were always on the back foot. Probably not the best choice of deck for best of three format. But anyways, I, I had fun. So we, we got a thousand gems. We got something. I appreciate you guys watching, and we will uh, see you in the next one.